And we are back. Hey, we are Gandhi. Hey man. Precision from yesterday. I thought about it. Okay. I didn't pay much attention to what people said. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I do this because now I'm pressing this more. Mm. Uh, this is secure. And uh, if white makes a move here, I can directly attack it. Okay. Um, well, it's not your worst suggestion. Let's say it like that. But <laughs> watch it because I made a promise to myself I would have every move right this okay, time. You're because going yesterday to you tricked me. Okay. <laughs> That's why I took a lot of time into this move. So uh, watch out with your comment. Uh, well, I'm sorry to say that it's uh, wrong. <laughs> it would be wrong. Yeah. Yes. We no 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 no, 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 no joke. Yeah. I, I I know he played somewhere else, but. No, I think it, it would be wrong. Okay. Um, because now these two stones have a chance to become strong again. So instead of attacking them, this is, uh, well, you say that this is an attack move, attacking move, but this is actually, this takes it very easy. It's very laid back and you let your opponent do whatever he wants in this area. So you're right that you strengthen this and later you can attack or if white uh, enters here, you can attack white very much because this is strong and this is also strong. Yeah. So that's very good, but uh, yeah, what's important now is these two stones that are still a little bit weak. So you really want to threaten those. And black has a good opportunity at this point, because he already has three stones here, one stone here, these two stones. And white doesn't have any other stones than those two in the whole general area of this uh, game. So here white only has two moves and black has a lot. So it's black's chance to attack now. And he played here, okay. which uh, looks quite severe. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and right, uh, simply, uh, I don't know. You can uh, make mm -hmm. a wall here or something like this. Yeah, that's good. Uh, white plays here. And now a lot of players would be tempted to do. Hmm? Well, that's very good. <laughs> it's a very good move, man. Yeah. This is what uh, happened in the game. Uh, my first instinct would be to... Right here. Yes, oui. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm very weak, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, in my mind, I would have this kind of mentality that if I cut, it looks dangerous. Oh, because this? Yes. Oh, I didn't see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so immediately it will be one of mine against one, two, three, four yeah. of white. This is bad. Uh, yeah, it looks bad. But uh, yeah, in these kind of situations, the general principles, like you think, okay, four against one, most of the time they apply. But you always have to keep calculating everything, and uh, sometimes this actually works. Even when you're outnumbered, you can still fight. And in this case, uh, this is correct. Uh, I will show you what happened in the game. It was very nice by Black. Uh, Oi. What? Yeah. You want to play Atari? Yep. Oh man, this is so painful. Of course, yeah, why will do this? You will defend? Yeah. You will be swallowed. Yeah. Okay, okay, but you're now, what you're doing, it's almost as if you're crawling on the second line. It's now third it's line. It's the third line. Yeah, okay, okay, it's third line. But the difference is not that big, to be honest. Uh, and and Mart always has to watch out because if he yes. does, then you're connected. Uh, yes, White still has to come back. And then yeah, if White comes back, you, uh, mm -hmm. you build territory here. Okay. Um, so what would you do as White? As White, I would probably uh, Hane here now. Uh, I play here. Then you... Oh, but then you die. Okay. Uh, then, yeah. uh, then I first uh, Atari and then Atari. Okay. Atari, Atari, okay. Atari, yes. And I'll play. Okay. Um, well, this doesn't work for uh, for black because white can simply extend and go through. Uh, do you see what will happen? If black will defend here, white can go through oh, on this side. Yeah. And if black will defend here, white can go through on the other side. So this is very problematic for, uh, for black. Yes, I didn't um, see that. And well, even if you're not trying to kill this part of the board and you're... Uh, yeah, you well, that's, that's the second line. Uh, yes. Exactly, so that's the whole problem. You cannot kill these two stones, and you will have to run well, on the second line, like you said, and white will gain so much influence in the center. 
You only give him strength in this case. So uh, yeah, this uh, would be a terrible result. So always be careful with these kind of Ataris because uh, oh, how was it? It was like <laughs> <laughs> let's just take everything away. Um, this was like yeah. this, and then you play. So I played yeah. there. So. Be very careful because when you're outnumbered, uh, these kind of Ataris are, yeah, they usually don't work. Uh, yeah, especially well. when you have two stones like this, it's always good to keep in mind that, yeah, it's difficult to break free here because if you um, try to go through, uh, yeah, the usual way, you go out, then white can just cut you, and if you connect your stones, you'll get closed in. So white will surround you. Uh, then so it's hopeless for black. Uh, <laughs> it looks hopeless, but um, it actually isn't because black doesn't even try to do anything in this area. He just takes it easy and surrounds white from the other uh, position, from the other side. And now if white wants to capture the stone, it's actually not so easy. Uh, do you see this? <laughs> uh, no. So for example, if, uh, if it will go something like this, even if white can capture the stone, so let's say that black doesn't uh, uh, try to kill these, black can gain a lot from it because first you atar here, this, all, this is about timing, it's very important, because if you uh, first try to uh, do this, now this is also sente, but uh, yeah, maybe white will play here. I'm not sure. Well, anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm making it more complicated. <laughs> the explanation is becoming a little bit uh, strange now. But in these kind of situations, if uh, white will try to capture a stone, always do this Atari because it's free. So first play this, and then start to reduce the liberties of, uh, of white. So now white will have to respond here, and black gains uh, these moves. Oh, this was already here, sorry. So now, well, but can, can, uh, is not possible? Yes, yes, this is not possible, but for the sake of the argument... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, maybe if white will do this first, before all of this, it's not possible. Uh, but <laughs> let's not go into that. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to show that this is not good. I thought this was a simple game, uh, so I remember <laughs> it. <laughs> it is, but um, this is one of the <coughs> most interesting things about pro games and about really good games that look very simple. From the outside they look like yeah, everything is so easy, you know, I could play this game myself. But when you study it more deeply, you can see that all kinds of things are going on and the people are the players are really yeah, reading everything out. So you can see that um, go in the end is very natural. It's a very natural game because the simple moves that occur in the end they are right. Even when the players calculate so many things, which you don't see as the, as the audience of course, you only see these simple moves. Uh, so that's also a nice tip that I can give the audience. Try to always go with a natural flow in your game. Something that looks natural is most of the time correct. But it's difficult to, uh, yeah, to assess this in your own games. What is natural and what is not. Uh, but I think you get a feel for this when you play more. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So now black played here, yeah. and this doesn't look very promising for white. Okay, so what did white do? Uh, yeah. Well, first, white played the tire from this side. Because if white will start to play here, he is reducing his own liberties, and soon he will be captured. Because this stone is still there. So it will be very dangerous. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so first you retire here to somehow make yourself yeah, secure here. Um, now you play this. And you leave... What White is doing now looks really stupid, right? Because, yeah, you're just taking away your own liberties and it looks like you're going to die. But what White is actually doing is leaving a lot of weaknesses in Black's position. First of all, because of this stone, now white can play here, which is very important, because it leaves a weakness here. Yes, very good. This is nice timing to take this uh, Atari. And now the next move is crucial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you'll play there? 
first. Otherwise, write this. Okay, well, um, this is wrong. I'm sorry, it's not your perfect day <laughs> that you want. <laughs> I'm sorry. This would now be the wrong move. A lot of players would think about just defending here, and yeah, it still looks difficult for white. But actually, now white is safe. Because uh, this situation will occur. This is Sente, right? Okay, play. Yes, black has to play uh, here or here, I don't know. So maybe this is best because you defend one of your two uh, cuts. Do you see what I mean? It's oh, always yeah. important in a fight. When you have two po cutting points, you want to get rid of one. So you want to strengthen yourself first. Like this, it looks like you're strengthening, but still there are two cutting points. Okay, so this is, this is the, the shape solution if there's only one problem. Yes, very good. So if it would be like this, this would be a very natural and nice move. You're right. Okay. But now probably this is better because you leave only one cut. Okay, that's a very clear explanation. Uh, yeah, so uh, thanks. <laughs> so now it's white's turn and white will kill black because you can play here now. Like this you would of course die. Um, yeah. Yep. Because black will extend yep. only two liberties. And black free. Yes. But sometimes you can also first push from the other side and then still follow your original idea. So, uh, yeah, always when you have a close battle, also think of this. First you try to do this side, which looks natural, but if it doesn't work, why don't try your original idea, but first by pushing from the other side? Yeah, it's something that's kind of difficult as well to find in your games, but um, yeah, try to apply it. Okay, but if one side doesn't you have, work... You have to be like 100% sure it works yeah. before you play such a move. Huh? Yes, of course, because otherwise if it doesn't work you give away even more points. But in this case it's actually uh, very good because if you keep pushing now, white has three uh, liberties instead of two, like before. Um, but now, Yes, okay. exactly. So it's 1, 2, 3 against 1, 2, 3, and that means that black will die. Okay, did it happen like this? No, 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 this didn't happen. Oh. Because black uh, didn't play this move. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why this <laughs> is wrong. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like this, white would get rid of all his problems and be connected. So all his stones are connected and yeah. this is strong. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's also natural. I, I remember this game as black only played natural moves, so that's why I. Yeah. I didn't hesitate to play there. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, um, if, 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 if black not plays there, white is easily. Uh, it looks like it, but actually uh, it's not so simple. Because uh, black has a really nice uh, flow, and you will see what happens. So instead of playing here, black played on the other side. And uh, <laughs> forcing to yes. use the stone. Yes, exactly. Which looks very uh, well strange, because you're giving away points and uh, white is alive, right? Yes. yes. But actually, white is not alive yet, and it all has to do with this one stone. Yeah, but you can, but can take it anyway and has always two eyes, so what are you talking about? Yes, you're right. Uh, if white will have the chance to play here, he's alive. So, like yeah. this, there's no problem. But he can do it any time he wants. Uh, uh, yes, he can. But so, I don't... How do you mean it's not alive? <laughs> it's like... Well, first of all... I've never seen a position more alive than this white position. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, first of all, let me just explain what I mean by that it's not alive. If white neglects to play here very soon, so let's say black first strengthens himself. Black plays here. Yeah. And now well, white, white. white says, okay, whatever, man, I'm alive. I play in the other corner. Yeah. 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 So, so now... Make a move. Yeah. <laughs> Try to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Hop. And you already have a problem. This is something that hmm. is also very handy. Well, because you cannot play here. Yeah. Yes. So That's why this move is very crucial. So moves that are moves that are inside somebody else's territory in your opponent's territory can come into yeah. I into thought they were all, all, always bad because yeah. <laughs> of course if you give your opponent stones and you put dead stones in his territory, that's strange. But in a two may go situation when you have stones that are already in what's your... What's uh, Tumiko. <laughs> I saw that you are already like, uh, what's going on? Tumiko is life and death. So a life and death situation, this is a local situation uh, where you have to try to live. So here, yeah, white uh, yeah, has to make two eyes. You have to study those things, I never studied those. 
<laughs> yeah, to be honest, I also don't study them. Oh well, not enough. Um, which is why I'm still uh, at my level now. Um, studying Tumigo is very helpful and it improves your reading a lot. And reading is of course one of the fundamentals of Go. If you can read very well, even when your opening strategy is not very good, uh, you will see that yeah, your games will go very well because even when you do ugly moves or bad moves at first, you can compensate those. You can compensate your uh, big board errors big board strategy errors by just reading everything out locally. So for example when I was in China to study Go I was playing against a lot of uh, five-year-old kids, five, six-year-olds and they were throwing stones and uh, yeah, screaming in the Go school and I was trying to play very calm, you know, very serious and uh, play nice opening, very yeah, very nice and my opponents were just like, ah, come on, play a move and throwing stones and then do some really ugly move like uh, yeah empty triangle I, I was looking what's going on why why is he playing this and then suddenly when we were fighting in like a yeah, local situation where it was really important what would happen I would start losing every fight because even five year old boys yeah, five year old boys <laughs> because they could read all these kind of small things out perfectly without error and they found the most strange tsujis that yeah moves that look so ugly, you've never seen it before, but it works. So that's the, the benefit of being able to read very well. And Tumengo is the only way to, well, one of the only ways to increase your reading skill. One of the only ways. Yeah, of course there are other ways like playing and uh, yeah, trying to read as much as possible during your games. But to only uh, focus on reading, that's the, the perfect exercise, doing Tumengo. Because that's also one of the cases where you really need to read perfectly in a life and death situation. When, uh, that's yeah, when in a game your the life of your group is at stake, you need to read it all out, and yeah, that's why uh, two may go problems are perfect to yeah, strengthen yourself in that uh, aspect. <laughs> so okay. um, well, nice move. Yeah. So don't only think about uh, yeah I don't know moves on the inside, but also when you all already have move moves on the inside about something on the outside, which can be very helpful. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so uh, yeah, now at this point it's very dangerous for white to tanuki. It's actually impossible yeah, because uh, uh, yeah. this, this yes this all doesn't happen. Yes. So you are saying white has to take now here? Uh, no, now it's black's turn. So at this point, uh, Black has like one, two, three cutting points, so it looks very dangerous. And he has to get rid of at least one cutting and point. And this is on attack. Yes, exactly. Uh, what's even more important about the fact that this is also under attack, uh, is that one of these cutting points uh, is also at stake here. Do you, <laughs> do you understand what I'm aiming at? Uh, Try maybe to... Maybe from uh, what you said, uh, if you could... This and yes. that then this will be captured. Yes, very good. This is always Sente for white. And um, this is also very useful in your games. If you have a local fight, try to look at the moves that your opponent can play that are always Sente. Because if those moves are Sente, it means that uh, basically they are already played in the future. But do you have to play them as soon as possible or do you have to keep them in mind? Uh, keep them in mind, of course. So, uh, I'm just saying that... <laughs> you make it so difficult, man! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm ju I just mean that if you're fighting in a local area and you want to do a move somewhere here, think about, okay, whatever I do, if I play somewhere, this move will be sente for my opponent. And then I will have to respond. So that means that I actually cannot cut here. Because he is already defended. At this point in the game, it looks like black can go through here, but actually he cannot. Because this move is sente for white. So that's what I mean. Keep those sente moves of your opponent in your mind. And remember, because it means that they are already played out, basically, in the future. Okay, so black has to run away. Uh, yes, that's... that would be nice. If you run away, you get rid of this problem. But then there are still three cutting points. So now, instead of running, black takes away this cutting point, 
which now again means... Well, it's an empty triangle. Yes, it's an ugly shape, but now at least he defends one of his cutting points, so instead of three, there are two. Plus, now this option is still is available suddenly, because uh, this is not sente anymore for white. Like this, it's sente, but if this is here, it's nothing. Okay, yes. Okay. So that's why now, if black defends this cutting point, he also defends these stones. Okay, so white has to respond by playing here. Yes. Like this, white uh, keeps pressuring black, and now of course black has to add another move. This is the shape point. It's very good to remember. Low Q players might yeah, think about these kind of things, but this... Mm, this cost me a lot of points, I have to say. Okay. It took me like a lot of defeats to realize I don't have to play, because white will just throw in. Uh, yes, white can throw in or either play this move. This is actually the perfect uh, yeah, uh, punishment, punishing move, because it also shows that this is correct by black, so if black doesn't play it, white will play it. See, it's again the same mentality. And like this you can see that if black extends here... Then, then you do it. Yes, then uh, you will be able to capture uh, all of this. So, well, it's not entirely captured, but it will be very painful. But if you play like this, this is an Atari. You have to come back. Now white can... Throw in. Yes, <laughs> very good, throw in. And uh, like this. Now you can Atari. So, you have to read all of these things out, of course, in your game. But when you see that you're going like this on the first line, it's almost always wrong. And now uh, White has this, uh, yeah, <laughs> has this punishment ready for you. And yeah, Black is still not dead because you can, <laughs> you can, <play> yeah, <laughs> you can do it again, but it will keep going on like this. And White gets like insanely uh, much strength. And what Black is doing is just only running away, making no points. The very ugly shapes, all dame points. So, on the first line. <laughs> so yeah, these kind of situations are terrible, of course. So that's why um, this shape... Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, this move. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, that's in my game now, nowadays. Okay, very nice. Uh, yes. So do not play this. Really? <laughs> Don't forget it. Don't be a hurry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is very painful. Yeah. So, okay, like this. And now, uh, actually, White um, did one, yeah, kind of vulgar move, to be honest. Right here? Yes, exactly. So, pushing from behind. And you're helping Black because if you do not make this exchange, and later you can fight, I don't know, maybe if later this is stronger, if you have stones around here, then these kind of points become very interesting. Because you can attack black in a hole, like the entire uh, position of black, the entire group. But if you push black at this moment... It will be the perfect extension from the stone. Yes, exactly. So, first of all, you strengthen black locally here, he gets eyes, and he also runs away to his friend. So, he's connecting his groups in a very natural way, even making territory. So, you can argue that maybe this is incorrect. Okay. But it all depends on this local fight here now. Because of course if white doesn't push here later, black will be able to play here and, and then yeah then white has to run. Yes. And black is making like lots of territory there. Yes. So it's understandable. It's very understandable and uh, yeah this kind of thing is all about timing. It's very difficult even for me to realize when it's okay to do this kind of vulgar moves and when it's not. But do, do you think this, this professional 13 year old kid mm -hmm. saw like this when he played uh, the, this funny cut himself move? Yes, uh, even more so I think that he just knows all these kind of standard things. So uh, when he already invaded with this move, uh, I think he already knew that it's good for him. Um, and that this kind of fight would follow and it's a good result for Blake. Yeah, it's also one of the big differences between professionals and amateurs. That professional players just know all kinds of standard uh, situations. They know, oh, if I have stones in here in this corner like this, and my opponent approaches in such a way, then I already, yeah, basically cannot get a bad result here. And 
amateur players have to always calculate everything, think about the whole general principles, how does it look, yeah, you know, you just know a lot less of standard things. So, you just have to be, have like a very good memory to become professional. Uh, yes, I, I think so, yeah, sure. And I, said, I said just. Oh, just. <laughs> no, not just. <laughs> but you also need it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, back to the game. Yes. Uh, so Vanessa pushed, you said. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so what would you do now as white? Let me have a little look. Of course white has to be careful now still here, because uh, this group is not entirely alive and black get, got rid of one of his cutting points, so he strengthened himself locally. Uh, yeah, because now, because you, you explained that this is a threat. Mm -hmm. Yes. So white has to... Well, play. locally there's of course uh, one other possibility, if black would play here now, white still has this kind of cut. So it's not completely, um, yeah, white wouldn't be completely dead if this would occur, because black still has weaknesses of his own in this uh, group. Okay. No, okay, then uh, I would play. Okay, but it's white's turn. Oh! <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a kind of important. Excuse me. That's okay. White. <laughs> yes, white pushed white. here and... This would be very stupid, I think. It's very yeah. slow, yes. Uh, I don't know, maybe... Uh, yeah, the cut looks uh, interesting, but actually it doesn't work. Do you see why? Mm -hmm. Cutting is always a good first idea, but uh, yeah. Yeah, there's this simple like this. Yeah. yeah, you can play here, first at time. If white extends, and then you play here. Yes, very good. So black has only two liberties, and white has one, two, three here. And now this cut is no longer there, so this yes. is not the. It's the not correct. But it's in this area. Yes, it's in this area. That's very good. And if you move here, then I don't know, maybe this one. Yes, yes. White played this move. Ah. Very good. <laughs> Uh, and to be honest, um, I'm not again. I'm not sure about the timing of this move. Uh, like you said, if you play here, it's very slow. But it also gets rid of all the weaknesses. So at this point, if you would do this, white is completely alive. It's very important. And black still has weaknesses. So black still has one, two cutting points. And well, he has to at least defend one of those. So if black would defend here, he gets the whole corner. But now white has sente. So, yeah, it depends on your playing style and it also depends on how this will work out. Because in the game, this looks like a nice timing move because you destroy black's uh, corner territory in sente. But later on, uh, you will see that, oh sorry, this move was here, that white still had to come back uh, in this area and still had to play here. So. Yeah, like that you can argue that maybe playing there immediately was better, even though you give a little bit of territory to Black. A little bit? Like a very big one? Uh, well, if Black will... So if you play like this and Black will play here, then locally you only gain like territory here. Of course, this also becomes stronger, but uh, yeah, these stones are already here, so this is already looking like territory. And you can still reduce it by playing like here, for example. By shoulder hit, so... Um, well, let's just see uh, what happens in the game. But um, yeah, maybe it's nice to leave this fight for next. Uh, oh, for tomorrow. Yeah. For the next. Sure. Uh, so I have to think about move for black. Yes, and uh, try to see a little bit how this fight will go because now it's very interesting. It will be a big fight. But I remember the move. Okay, that's cool. Try to remember the whole sequence. <laughs> <laughs> that, that I don't remember for sure, and I will don't I will not look. Okay, okay, I will. I will try to find uh, the sequence. Okay. Uh, I hope you will try too. You can see the game on Eurogo TV, but uh, do like me. Uh, just look at this position and to, to try to think mm -hmm. with me. 
and yeah. uh, let's see uh, how much smarter you are than <laughs> me. Uh, Murugandhi, thank you very much. It was very, very uh, interesting, I have to say. I okay. was like wrong every time, but <laughs> I don't care. I don't care because okay. I really feel I have, like this is one of the episodes I learned lot I learn every episode yeah. I have to say thank you very much for that no, but don't. this time uh, I think more than usual okay that's great yeah. okay. so I hope so you have the same experience and uh, we see you tomorrow yeah sure bye, bye. <laughs>